Asymmetric encryption is being used just about everywhere. Let's look at the following scenario and then we will dive in and understand how it actually works. So let's assume that Eve wants to send a message to Bob. She writes down the message, she encrypts it using its own symmetric key, and then when it is all encrypted, it is being sent to Bob. Now, Bob knows the key, it knows the symmetric key that Eve used, he uses it, and by that he actually decrypts the message. Now, if you think about it, we actually achieved only one thing, we encrypted the message. But then again, we have other challenges. The first one, how can we deliver the key between Eve and Bob? Let's assume that even Bob doesn't live close by. The second challenge is how can we tell that the message wasn't modified? How can we tell that no one actually modified with the bits of the message itself? And the third challenge, how can we tell that the person who claims to be Eve is really Eve? For that, we have asymmetric encryption coming up. When Eve encrypted her message, she actually used a symmetric encryption and the key that was used by the algorithm was known also to Bob. Let's just take a look at the terminal and let's generate, let's just make it bigger and let's generate a random key. So we'll use for that OpenSSL, rand which is a command that allows you to generate pseudo-random numbers, integers. Um, let's use um, a key in hexadecimal, and let's use an 8-byte key. And that is the key. That is the key that could be used in a symmetric key encryption and that both parties should be aware of. So if we get back to even Bob, Eve used this um, key with its algorithm. It could be either AES, it can be DES, it can be TreeDES, any symmetric encryption algorithm. And Bob used the same key. So both parties has the same key. They both know that the algorithm is either AES or TreeDES, and the message could be decrypted on the other side. On asymmetric encryption, Eve actually generate two keys, key pairs. They may look similar, but they are actually different, mathematically related, but different. The first key is the private key. The private key is actually the secret key that Eve needs to keep in a secret place. The second key is the public key, and as the name suggests, it is public. Everyone can use that key. Now, when Bob gets the key, it can use it for asymmetric encryption and actually decrypt messages that were sent by Eve. It can also encrypt his own messages using the public key, and from there, just send it back towards Eve and Eve can decrypt it. So if we'll go back to OpenSSL, let's just write down OpenSSL, GenRSA. RSA is one of the algorithms of asymmetric encryption and we'll use the 2048-bit key. And that's our private key. That's our private key we can actually generate the public key from the private key that we have just generated. But that's the private key that Eve has actually generated. And as we said, it should be kept secret. And there we have it. Eve generates a private key and a public key and sends the public key again to Bob. Now, Bob gets its public key, and from now on, it can decrypt Eve's messages. Now, think about it. 
The fact that only his public key can decrypt Eve's messages suggests that the message actually came from Eve. That's one way to authenticate the other side. Now, in fact, asymmetric encryption is not used to encrypt the session itself, the data, the payload that is being sent from Eve to Bob and vice versa, for many reasons. One of them is the size of the keys. So what actually is being done is that the private and the public keys are being used to encrypt the session keys, the symmetric encryption keys. They are much smaller in size and they are being decrypted and encrypted much faster than asymmetric encryption keys. So Eve can actually generate a random, a pseudo-random key that is a symmetric key, encrypt it using its own private key. Bob can get the encrypted message, open it with its own public key, and now he knows what is the symmetric key that Eve will use to encrypt the whole session. 